We do this thing where we cling to the things that we have or the people that we have because we're afraid that that's all we're ever gonna get. You have to allow yourself to let go and detach because you have to trust the timing of your life. You have to realize that you are being guided. Everything in your life is unfolding exactly as it is meant to. And the only thing that we can control is our reaction. What's good, you guys? So in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about how to detach and how to let go and release control because it's so easy to be in a position of trying to control everything and worrying and obsessing and that's just not good for us. It doesn't do us well to obsess or try to control anything. We're gonna talk about that a little bit today and I'm going to share a few ways in which I have personally learned to release control and let go and detach. But we're gonna light this. The scent I'm smelling is I really don't know the name of it, but I would say it is kind of like an ocean smell. And I hope that's not too distracting for you guys. Personally, I found that I have always been somewhat of an anxious type A person. I mean, I'm the type of person that when I'm going on a trip, I'm gonna plan out every single detail. When I'm starting anything new, like I have to do a ton of research before I feel comfortable enough to actually start. And that can be both a positive and a negative thing. I've seen my desire and need to control come up in many different areas of my life. I've seen it come up in my relationships, in my friendships, in the way that I go after things that I wanna do in life as well as just on a day-to-day -day basis i i feel like i have to know the exact plan the exact steps that i need to take in order to feel less anxious and that can be a really tough thing to deal with because it's basically saying that if you don't know all the steps ahead, then you're gonna feel some sort of way. And this can be really, really tough to deal with because personally, I was always overthinking, always feeling anxious. And if I don't consciously remember to let go and release control and just remind myself of certain things, then I am gonna be in that overthinking place. I am gonna be in that anxious place. And it takes a toll on your mental health. It takes a toll on your relationships and your ability to feel happy in your everyday life. Honestly, this can show up in a variety of different ways. I'm not saying that being a type A person is bad. Like that can honestly really be good in certain scenarios. But if you're a person who is trying to control how things are going to align for you or you are anxious because certain things in your life aren't panning out in the way that you want them to, or maybe you are obsessing about your appearance or you're obsessing about like whether somebody's going to call you or how a certain relationship is going you have to learn how to release control so the first thing i want to talk about is why do we try to control and why do we attach the reason that we struggle to detach from people situations and our thoughts is our ego we have a voice in our head at all times of the day and it is constantly verbalizing judging complaining that voice in your head is the reason that you feel anxious overwhelmed or like you can't let go because if we can't get the world exactly as we like it then we're judging it we're complaining we're worrying about it and then we decide what we want to do about it all in our head and the reason we do that is because it makes us feel empowered it's our only means to feeling like we have power over the world around us when in reality we have to realize that we have no control over the world around us and the only thing that we can control is our reaction to the world we cannot control other people and we cannot control how things play out but one thing that we can control is the way we react to people is the way that we react to situations so what has really changed my life and allowed me to become less anxious and become a better person is realizing that i don't have control over the world but i do have control over the way i react to the world i do have control over the way i see speak to other people, the way that I present myself in this world, that's the only thing that you have control over. When it's all said and done and we leave this earth because we all will leave this earth, we're gonna leave behind the people that we knew, the things we own, the status of life that we were in. But the one thing we take with us when we die is our experiences and the way that we existed. Personally, I believe that our soul will transcend our body. We're taking with us the lessons that we learned and the way that we lived. So the sooner 
sooner you realize that this world is impermanent and you can't control people, you can't control situations, and everything is gonna unfold exactly as it was meant to, is the sooner that you can let go and find peace in the fact that you just have to learn how to react in a way that is representative of how you would like to exist in this world. Another thing that I have learned is that if you are struggling to detach from a situation or you're trying to control the way things play out, there is likely a deeper reason behind it than you just trying to manifest what you'd like. For example, if you are in your head and you're trying to control what your partner is doing on a day-to-day basis and you're obsessing, you're checking their location and you're checking in with them throughout the day just to make yourself feel better, there's probably a deeper reason for that than you just simply trying to know where your partner is. Maybe you have a fear of abandonment and that is showing up in you obsessing about what they're doing and where they're at. This came up in my life this past year as I was starting my photography business. I honestly was not putting myself out there and one thing that I really struggled with was implementing a marketing plan. I would buy courses and watch a lot of YouTube videos. A healthy amount of researching and learning how to do something is okay, but I spent nine months avoiding doing what I said I was gonna do and market my business because I was afraid of failing. I was afraid of putting something out there and then not having it reach anybody or people just simply being disinterested. And when I noticed that, I realized that I was also doing certain things in my life because again, I was afraid of failing. I was afraid of being rejected. So once you realize that there's a deeper reason that assessing and not detaching, you can do the work to unlearn that and it'll somehow always kind of connect to a fear of something. There is something there that is causing you to obsess and not be able to let go. I also feel like we struggle to detach from situations and people because we have a lack mindset. So we do this thing where we cling on to the things that we have or the people that we have because we're afraid that that's all we're ever gonna get. And all of that stems from low self-worth, honestly, and a lack mindset. You don't believe that there is more out there for you. And by you clinging, you're communicating to the universe or God or whatever you wanna call it that you are resistant to having better things come in your life. You're communicating that you are fearful. And when you put out the energy of being afraid, you're always gonna feel afraid and you're gonna attract low vibrational things. You're gonna attract low vibrational people. You're not gonna be able to manifest the things that you want if you feel like you have to hold on to what you have because that's the best you can do. We are projecting our fears and our experiences and our trauma on each other. Everything that you see in this world is a mirror. And so if you are internally feeling fear and you're internally feeling anxiety because you can't let go, then everything that you're gonna receive is gonna be in that frequency as well. It's always gonna be in that energy of fear and sadness and anxiety. You have to allow yourself to let go and detach because you have to trust the timing of your life. You have to realize that you are being guided. Everything in your life is unfolding exactly as it is meant to. And honestly, that should feel freeing to know because if everything is panning out exactly as it meant to and you are on a divine path, you should trust that everything that you want will manifest, that the people in your life are in your life for a reason. You do not have to do any worrying or overthinking for your life to naturally pan out as it is meant to. Another reason that we tend to cling and can't let go is because we don't accept the present moment as it is, which means when things are happening in your life, good or bad, you're not accepting it. I heard this thing the other day and somebody said, appreciate the good days because a bad day will come, but also appreciate the bad days because a good day will also come. So it's like, it doesn't matter whether things are feeling super positive or super negative because you have to realize that everything in this world is temporary. Everything is impermanent. And so if you were able to accept things as they come and then let it go, you're gonna feel a whole lot less stress because you're just living in the moment and allowing yourself to have gratitude attitude for your life no matter how it feels in that moment because you know that this will also pass. I always tell myself not to cling to my problems because in one year's time, will I even be thinking about that problem or will I have moved on from them? In one year's time, you're gonna have a completely different set of problems. Let things go and accept things as they come. You gotta have that it is what it is attitude. And the sooner you have that it is what it is attitude, you're gonna feel more grateful for the things that you have in your life, more grateful for the good days when they come, the bad days when they come, because you know that you can just let them go, that you can detach and that your happiness doesn't come from your circumstances or your situations, that your happiness comes from the internal place that you're cultivating for yourself. And isn't it better for us 
us to source our contentment from within rather than allowing people, places, or situations to control the way that we feel about life. I also want to add that literally how you feel about your life is what you will receive. That is the law of attraction. So if you're feeling grateful about your financial situation, then what you're going to receive is financial abundance. But likewise, if you're feeling like pissed off about the situation that you're in when it comes to your finances, maybe you can't afford to go on trips and go shopping every weekend, but maybe you can afford to pay your bills and to go eat out once a week. If you're not feeling grateful for what you have, why would the universe bless you with more? Clinging and attaching to things is our basic human nature. It takes a lot of effort to practice detaching and letting go. But when you do, your life is going to change because you're going to realize that everything is temporary. I just have to appreciate what I have been given. And so when situations come up, when you have relationships with people, you won't need to cling to them because you'll be able to accept things as they are, knowing that one day this is going to pass. The sooner you do that, the sooner your manifestations will come through because you're moving through life with good energy and appreciation and you're going to feel happier because of that. And if you feel like you're struggling with letting go, just realize that you are not alone, that we are all collectively going through this. So let's talk about some ways that we can practice letting go. So if you struggle with obsessing over the things that you are trying to manifest, maybe it is a job or a relationship or a financial goal. One thing that I've personally implemented is the ladder of believability, which is essentially setting small goals in order to reach your big goal. Because when it comes to manifesting, it's often really hard to trust that your manifestation is going to come through if you don't believe that it's possible for yourself. What I like to do is practice strengthening my trust muscle by first manifesting small things for myself that I believe that I'm fully capable of receiving as I'm trying to reach that big goal as well. And the reason that this is important is because you're not going to be able to release control and let the universe do the work for you to get what you want unless you believe that it is possible for you. So I have a list in my phone and it just has small manifestations that I would like to come through. And this can be in relation to the big thing that you want to manifest or it can be completely unrelated. Some examples that I have on this list are like a very specific clothing item. Like I really want red cowgirl boots or maybe it's a free cup of coffee or it's like a free yoga membership. Honestly, it can be whatever you want it to be. These are just things that are small and simply just exist for you to realize that when those things naturally come in for you, the universe had your back. And these things will come to you in such a divine way. But the point of doing this is that it just strengthens your trust. And you'll realize that when you set an intention and you practice gratitude, you don't even really have to try to control every little thing to get what you want to receive. You simply just have to be open to allowing things to come into your life because you just have to trust the timing of your life. That if you feel that desire, then it is meant for you. And another way that you can practice letting go and detaching is by focusing on doing things that make you happy. So like finding a hobby or spending time with the people you love, you're going to naturally stop clinging to whatever you are feeling attached to because you're going to be focusing on yourself and doing the things that make you happy. Do things that are fun and feel good to you. Maybe you are trying to start a business. All of your free time doesn't have to go to starting that business. You can still carve out time in your day to go on a walk or or to read or do yoga or whatever you really like to do. And by you operating in a place where you are having fun and you are doing things that you love, you're releasing control over what you can't control and focusing on yourself. The next thing is working on your fears. So like I mentioned earlier that if you're trying to control a situation or a person or you're trying to control like everything that you do, there's probably a deeper reason behind it. So ask yourself, what am I afraid of? Why am I struggling to detach? Why can't I let go? When you cultivate the right environment to ask yourself these questions, you will know what it is that you need to work on. And some ways that you can work on your fears is by doing shadow work and journaling. You can actually go online and Google shadow work prompts and take one of those prompts and apply it to the fears that you're feeling. When you cultivate this space where you can openly write out what you're feeling, the healing will come through because you're creating a container where you're 
you're not going to be judged, where you can just simply listen and accept the way that you feel and start to do the work to unravel why you might feel that fear. Another way that you can work on your fears is again by practicing acceptance. So let's say when something happens and normally it would cause a negative emotional response out of you. Maybe somebody did something that you don't like or something just came up. Instead of getting upset or even labeling or categorizing it as a bad thing, just accept it. Allow yourself to realize that it just is what it is. When we start to have negative thoughts, we can literally control whether we're going to cling to them or let them go. So I typically get really anxious when I skip my nighttime routine. When I am feeling those anxious thoughts, I have a moment where I decide whether I'm going to spiral into them or I'm going to let it pass. By creating that awareness, it allows me to make the choice to let it go, to accept it, and to instead be present. Maybe the person that you're talking to or your partner didn't respond in the way that you wanted them to. Instead of getting angry, you can accept the situation for what it is and make a rational decision for how you would like to proceed instead of letting your emotions control you because you're trying to control how other people act. And another way to practice letting go is to realize you will never arrive to happiness. Even if you were to be successful at controlling every single thing in your environment, that will not make you any happier than you currently are. The only thing that will make you happy is by cultivating that within yourself. These moments in our lives are fleeting and one day we're going to look back and we're going to wish that we accepted things for how they were when they were happening because we would have felt lighter. So one thing that I've personally really been doing to practice letting go and detaching is by regulating my nervous system using breath work and meditation. It allows me to come back to myself and create a sense of groundedness. I think a lot of people think that when you're meditating, you're not really going to be thinking about anything and you're just kind of like zen and in the moment and that is true to some extent but actually the point of meditating is to practice that when those thoughts come up you kind of just let them pass so I like to think of my thoughts as clouds when I'm meditating and just like clouds I just witness them passing like slowly practicing that skill allows you to take that into your everyday life so it really is a skill that I feel like is underappreciated and that if you're struggling with detaching and just letting go you should be practicing in your life and it doesn't have to be super extravagant it can be for five minutes ten minutes there's a variety of resources to get started I personally love using guided meditations because it gives me something to focus on so another thing you can do is reframe letting go as a beginning instead of an ending because we often associate letting go like I let go of that relationship and the reason you should do this is because when you do let go it really is a beginning it's the beginning of you not allowing your external circumstances to control how you feel. It's the beginning of you taking control of the way that you react in the world. It also, in terms of manifestation, it's the beginning because when you trust that things are going to play out exactly as they are meant to, you realize that nothing is ending, that you are on a journey and that things are going to come to you. And you don't have to worry about controlling every little thing in order for your life to progress and move forward. The steps are ordered. This moment is leading you to the next. Don't block good things coming in your life because you can't detach from what you already have. So if that means letting go of certain people or things, let them go. You just have to trust everything and everyone in your life is there for a reason. You're going to feel more easeful. You're going to feel like you can approach your days with grace. And I don't want to get things confused because when you're manifesting, you still have to work towards the things that you want. However, you don't have to obsess about trying to control how fast you're going to get it or if it's going to come. It's already yours. You can trust the fact that if it's not meant to be, it won't be. And if it is, it will. You will be able to create space and awareness for you to let those things pass, both good and bad. And as a result of that, you're going to appreciate everything that you have in your life. Accept everything as it is and realize that things are temporary and this is going to free you because happiness exists already inside of you and there's nothing in this external world that can overpower the happiness and joy and contentment that you are able to create for yourself. So that's all I have for you guys in today's video. I hope that you guys took something from it and, and have found a new way to practice detaching in your life. I am so happy that I was able to share this with you because it was really on my heart. Stay tuned for the next video and I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you for watching. Bye.